Well, here is another Sony VCR that came in. This one actually came in from another shop that couldn't figure out what was going on and asked me to take a look at it. So let's dive inside, put a tape in it, and see what it does. Power on. Well, it loads forwards and backwards. It found itself. It knows where it is. Pop a tape in it and see what happens. Oh, interesting. I think the loading motor is slipping right off the bat. Oh, listen to that. Let me put the microphone right down next to the motor. The motor is actually trying to run, but it can't. I believe there's probably a crack in this gear where it presses onto the motor. Well, there is the loading motor gear right there, and look at this. I can grab it and easily pull it forward and back. So the, the shaft of the motor is not making good contact. Look at that right there. There is the crack. So that's what's happened. So what I'm seeing is that crack right there by the tip of the screwdriver. And that's what's allowing this to move forward and backwards and it's slipping on the loading shaft. Luckily, there's only one screw. Let's see if I can get it out with my flat blade screwdriver here. Oh, yep. It's just got a simple ribbon connector. We'll just go ahead and pull that out of there. Let's add some pressure to the side of this and see if the crack grows. Yep, look at that. There is the problem. So I think we can just go ahead and rough up the motor shaft. Rough up the inside of that. There's the crack on the inside. So I've got my little bit here and what I'm going to do is just press it against the motor shaft and hopefully it'll turn the shaft while I run it up and down just to make a little roughness for the glue to grab onto. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, the motor shaft is all scored. That's what I want. I want the glue to have something to bite onto. And I'm going to do the same thing to the inside of the gear that attaches to the motor. That should be good. Actually it fits on there better than before. So what I'm going to do is add some hot glue to the motor shaft and then I'm going to take my hot air blower and actually heat up the gear slightly and then press it on, let the glue cool, and then we should be good to go. So I've got it scored up pretty good inside as you can see. Now the shaft is completely hollow. You can see light all the way through it there. I'm just going to go ahead and add some hot glue to the center of this. That should be good. We'll add some to the motor shaft. It's going to cool very quickly with that metal. Now I only have it set to 300 degrees, so it shouldn't really damage the plastic, but it's going to be hot enough to melt the glue. It's going to take a moment. Get the motor shaft good and hot as well. Once it's done, I should be able to press this together. Yeah, I'll probably have to trim that off. It's just barely touching the motor at this point, but I can fix that momentarily. Very, very gently try to remove the excess hot glue. There it is. And now let's see if I can get my oiler in here. Add just a droplet of oil to the end of this shaft.
All right, let's put it back in and see what happens now. Power on. Oh, look at that. There's a bad spot in the tape right there. Oh, it's spilling the tape out. Oh dear, there's something else going on in here. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Now let's see if it'll give it back. Yeah, it's gonna give it back, but it's gonna eat the tape in the process. Maybe another broken gear on the bottom of the mechanism? I guess we'll have to investigate that and find out. So there's one screw in the front that holds the mechanism down, and we'll have to pull the probably the entire circuit board out of the unit to get to it. So let's go ahead and remove the front panel. Front panel is off. Next, we'll go ahead and zip the rest of the screws out. Cross brace off. And let's see, it looks like we have to unplug this board on the front. Might require a little bit of help. All right, those boards just unplug, and it looks like they were one board to begin with, but they're just standard plugs. Just gotta pull up with a good amount of force, they'll unplug. Now I see it all goes in at a weird angle, it looks like. How did they build this thing? Holy moly. Okay. Mechanism is out of the plastic chassis. And I'm not seeing any screws on the bottom at all. Ah, there's a big plug over here. Just got to lift up with enough force and the whole thing unplugs. Let's just unplug the audio control erase head right there. And then the whole mechanism just lifts off. Okay, look at that. What is going on? Something's happening down here with the gear changer. That's what changes from high torque to low torque. So in fast forward and rewind, this is in the high torque mode. And in play, it's in the low torque. So it has limited slip, which allows the capstan motor right here to run at a constant speed and then the take-up reel over here to run at a much lower speed at a limited torque. And what I'm seeing right now, right in here, is this was just slipping, which leads me to believe we've got another snapped gear probably cracked in here. Okay, so let's get in here and see what might be going on. First, I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the belt, and then we'll try to peel off this little retainer. It should have a split in it. There it is. I think I'm gonna have to take some of these parts out of here to gain access, unfortunately. It's not too terribly tough to do. I have to remove this gear by taking this one screw out. The gear can be lifted off. I have to unclip this gear. It can be lifted off as well. Pay attention to the timing marks. That mark goes into that hole, and this mark lines up with that hole right there. So let's go ahead and take those off. Let's remove that one screw. This retaining tab just lifts off. Then you can just very gently lift that gear up and out of there. So looking at the top side, this is the center pin for the main loading gear. It's got this little tab on it. Very gently push the tab back and down. 
and it snaps out of place just like that. Now, as you can see, some of the parts have fallen out. No need to worry. And it goes back in place just like that. That's what allows these two loading arms to move up together. So that is the orientation. So now to remove this gear, it doesn't lift up, but there are two tabs. If you push the two tabs in right here, you can see them, they just cleared these other two tabs. Now this can be lifted up and then there's the problem. And then that can be lifted completely out. There's the problem right there. That gear is supposed to be attached here, but now we need to remove the gears from the top as well. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and just place this loading gear back in place for now. That keeps all these pieces from wanting to fall out when I flip this over. So now I need to remove these two tension arms right here and they once again have little locking tabs underneath them. There's one of them off. There's the locking tab. This one's got two tabs. And that can be just picked up and taken out as well. Now this gear mechanism, the only thing that holds that in is if you see this little tiny split right here, it actually wraps around this post. So just a little bit of gentle forward pressure and it should release. Let's see if that holds true. So I'm just gonna pull this forward. And then that whole gear mechanism just comes out. Nothing wrong with this at all. There is the problem right there. These have come apart. There is the problem. You can see the split right there. As I move it, it gets bigger. I don't know if it's got just one split. Nope, it's actually split in two places. So just like before, I'm gonna take the uh, Dremel tool and I'm gonna scuff up the inside of this. I'll clean off all that grease because the glue's not gonna wanna stick to the grease. We'll add some hot glue and press the two pieces back together and then it should be good. Actually, it's gonna be better than new because it's not gonna have that extra tension and it's not gonna let go over time. So first thing, clean the area. I'm gonna use a cotton swab with some acetone to remove the oil that you see on there. Actually, that's when I change my mind, I'm gonna use an acid brush. I'm just gonna submerge the whole thing in acetone, which makes it very slippery. And I'm just gonna give it a bath in acetone. Same thing on this side. And the nice thing about acetone, it's very quick drying. So dry, you can put this together and then just rotate it until it locks in place like that. And then you can see the tabs have locked into those three holes right there. If they weren't locked, then it looks like that. So if you rotate it, here comes the tabs and they're locked into place right there. There we go, cleaned it up with some magical solution acetone. So once again, my rework station is at 300 degrees Fahrenheit which should be just below the melting point of this plastic. So once I get both of these up to a good temperature, I'm just gonna press the two together. 
and I'm going to try to rotate them as I put them together to smear the hot glue to get them in all the nooks and crannies that I just created in here. Okay, let's put the two halves together. Okay, there it is. The two halves are together and I wiped off the excess hot glue while it was still warm. Now I just let it cool for a few minutes and we should be ready to put this thing back together and get it back to the customer. Okay, for reassembly, I'm going to add just a droplet of oil on the shaft, even though it is a nylon gear. I'm just going to add just a slightest little bit of lube for it. And then we should be able to drop the whole piece back into place here. And so this lifts up and down to change the torque, depending on what is requested. So I think I'll go ahead and reassemble the bottom of the unit before I assemble the top. Okay, now that the slider is back in place, we can go ahead and drop this gear into place, making sure that this point lines up with that dot and making sure that that dot lines up with this. It's really hard to see, but there is a small dot raised into this tip of this gear. So that all looks good. Press it until it clicks. So now this should cause loading and then this should cause unloading to go in this direction. Now when it comes to reassembling this gear, remember there's a hole right here that has to line up with this hole and there's a mark right there that has to line up with this hole. So if you just press the two back together, you're probably going to be off by a tooth. But if I move it and snap it into place, you can see now that this mark is lined up with the hole and these two holes are lined up perfectly together. Now you can't rotate this or move this by hand at this point because now it's relying on the uh, cassette carriage loading motor and gears and whatnot. So now I can reinstall the tab that retains this gear. All right, that's back in place. So for this gear, lay it down flat and push it into place until it clicks. Now when we move this gear, we should have engagement. So next we'll go ahead and reinstall the brake arms. Remember this one's got a little spring on it. Now I just got to connect the spring. Just like that. Now these are ready to go. Okay, now back to the bottom. Now remember this gear right here has little notches cut in it and this tip of the spring has to go into one of the notches. There it goes, dropped right into place. Next we'll put the retaining clip back on. Keep that from coming off. And so I'm gonna go ahead and clean the capstan motor pulley right up here and the take up pulley here because they look very brown. I just want to try to get some of the crud out of them. Once again, cotton swab, acetone, you know the drill. And because I've had my fingers all over it, I just want to make sure it's clean. And we'll go ahead and service the belt. Once again, paper towel folded, acetone dipped, Gently pull it through, and now we'll get comments, as usual. You can't clean a belt with acetone. Well, wait till you see me clean the video heads with a cotton swab with acetone. That will blow your mind. All right, looks really good. No twists in the belt. Always make sure the belts do not have twists in them. So I ran out of parts to put back in it, so I think it's ready to put it back together at this point. So I went ahead and uh, removed the loading motor just so I can run this thing through its paces, just as if a tape was inserted to make sure everything goes smoothly. So I'm just gonna pretend to put a tape in it, then I'm gonna load it with the loading gear. Oh, 
I want to make sure the tape guides are both fully loaded. There they are, they're nice and tight. The back tension arm needs to come over a little bit farther. There it is. And I'm just watching the operation of the brake levers right here. Since we had those out, make sure they all work good. Looks absolutely perfect. Okay, it's ready to go back together. Just a note before assembling this unit, I've never had problems with the mode select switches on the Sony's, so I'm just gonna leave it be. You can run it around a couple times if you wanted to, just to make sure the contacts have been used recently. If you do wanna service it, all you have to do is pry gently underneath it, and it will open up. This one appears to be in pristine shape, so I'm not gonna do anything to it. I think the ones that came from Sony were lubricated much better than the Philips Magnavox. Make sure this pointer lines up with this mark and this tab right here is the tab that has to engage in this hole right here. So if you notice this boss on this gear and the tab, well, the boss goes in the center of the mode select switch and the pin has to line up with the hole in the gear. So pretty straightforward reassembly. There's two connectors right here that have to plug together. Just be very cautious to make sure that you've got them lined up first, especially right here, the infrared emitter. And now this one has real rotation detect emitter and detectors that stand alone and you have to make sure they go up through these holes right here. So just pay particular attention to all those items. And most of the time, these things almost assemble themselves. They're that good. And I'm just looking down in here to make sure that I see that the mode select switch has engaged with the gear correctly, and it has. And I felt the video head connector and the capstan motor engaged correctly. Next, I'll go ahead and just reinstall the loading motor. We'll put it back in its frame and we'll give it a quick cleaning and then give it a test. Okay, at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a complete cleaning. Anything that touches the tape, just cause I've had my grubby hands in there. So I'll time-lapse this so you can enjoy it in fast motion. All right, here we go. Let's pop a tape into it. The power is on. There it is. The tape is plain. It's taking up the excess tape, not spilling the tape this time. We'll do a quick fast forward and rewind check. So there is checking to see how much tape it has on the reel to know whether it can go into high speed or not. Fast forward, great. Rewind. Let's eject it, make sure it takes the tape back up. Absolutely perfect. Well, let's see if it has video at this point. Okay, so I've got my capture device set up right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a tape into it. And it's loading the tape. Hopefully we'll get a picture shortly. There it is, auto tracking is trying to find the optimal point right now. Anyhow, it's working. Video looks great, I hear audio on it, sounds good. There it is, up and running. I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the Sony VHS VCR SLV N700. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. 
Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye. But you would think that that would be the, the, some of the reasons that he's fleeing, but uh, I have no idea why these people continue to do this, especially now they know their car is damaged. You know, they aren't going to go very far. It's just a matter of time, and they just don't bother to just pull over and say, you know what, I've had enough. You know, earlier when Wendy Moore of the CHP was telling us about the various techniques they could use to stop somebody, she mentioned that ramming technique where they would kind of come up behind and bump the car and get him to kind of spin out. This, to me, seems like the perfect...